around uh, uh, the book, uh, The Future of Health. Uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, with me tonight uh, Ali uh, Azan, uh, Chief uh, Medical Officer at uh, Vitality, uh, connected from the UK, a Unity Stokes uh, co founder of Startup Health, uh, connected uh, from the West Coast, I believe, San Francisco. Uh, in the in in the US, uh, so welcome Ali and Unity. Thanks for being here. Great, great Thank to you. be here. And and I know it's evening time where where many of you are. It's very early in the morning here, so we have all the time zones covered. <laughs> yeah, we we have. <laughs> And again, thank you so much for making the time on a Friday evening for you, Ali, and on a Friday morning for you, Unity. Um, so uh, uh, for those of you that didn't uh, uh, participate into uh, the first uh, uh, of these live chats, uh, these are very informal conversations uh, for about 30 minutes uh, with the first and foremost friends and fellow experts uh, in the global digital health uh, ecosystem that um, I've been very fortunate that they decided to contribute to the book with their guest uh, uh, perspectives. Um, so just as a, uh, as a brief uh, intro to the book itself, uh, the book has been recently published uh, just uh, before the Frontiers Health event of this year. So it's like uh, now a couple of weeks ago by Wiley um, under the title, The Future of Health, how digital technology will make care accessible, sustainable, and human. Uh, it's a book uh, written for everyone interested into the digital health space. So hopefully uh, health consumers, patients, doctors, uh, policymakers will find this book uh, uh, a review of uh, uh, many examples uh, from the digital health space in the first part and in the second part, there is a, a bunch of reflections about where this is heading and how this will transform health uh, and care uh, for the better, uh, as the subtitle uh, alludes to. And as always, you know, I'm super happy to receive your comment feedback. Uh, this, is a, um, uh, this book is all about the ecosystem and spread the knowledge about this uh, fascinating transformation that digital health is bringing to, to health as we know it. So with that said, let's, uh, you know, uh, start our, our conversation. Uh, Ali has been contributing to uh, the chapter Digital Health Enabling Platforms. And uh, the, the, the idea behind that, that part of the book is that today we have and we are experiencing and progressively validating more and more point solutions, so specific solutions to specific problems, which is great because it's often the best way to begin with. But when we think about our health, uh, our health providers, and more in the medium to long term, how we will handle uh, health uh, and healthcare through these uh, digital uh, tools, it's unlikely that we'll be using a bunch of different tools that won't talk each other. So this notion of platforms that will eventually orchestrate multiple solutions will probably also allow us to discover uh, what's most appropriate for, for that specific need will play a big role. So I would start to, 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 to ask Ali what, uh, and, and Vitality, you know, you will start to say, to tell us more about Vitality itself, but Vitality is a pioneer uh, from an insurance perspective into collecting those solutions. So I would like to ask you, uh, besides introducing Vitality and your and, 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 and you guys' perspective on digital health, uh, to elaborate a bit on this concept of platforms um, and maybe also uh, what uh, uh, solution provider, entrepreneurs, startups or scale-ups uh, should really focus on to engage with a player like Vitality. So. Alice, Thank you, Roberta. Yours. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. So just to share a bit more about Vitality, talk about the digital health um, importance to us for our customers, and then we'll talk a bit about the platform play. Um, Vitality are the UK imprint of Discovery, who are a company based in South Africa and have operations in over 30 countries. 
Here in the United Kingdom, we have around 1.5 million customers, um, around 750,000 on our health books, and the rest of them across our life insurance books, um, as well as our car business and our investments business too. We believe in a concept called shared value insurance. So in insurance, we believe that people shouldn't only benefit when something horrific happens to them or they need to make a claim, but actually should get benefit um, from no matter what, if they're purchasing our product. So we embedded a health improvement program, the Vitality program, which is the biggest platform of its type in the world. And that's predicated on three things. The first one is helping customers understand their health. The second one is helping them um, find ways in which they can improve their health. And the third one is continuing to incentivize it. We've had partnerships in the health improvement and the healthcare side since as long as we've been going. Partnerships are absolutely part of our lifeblood and they're what give benefits to our members. Digital health has been a huge part of this. Since 2015, we have offered telemedicine fully inclusive to all of our customers in our health insurance business. And this has been absolutely transformational because it provides members with another route to access convenient, high quality primary care at um, no cost to them, but also helps them really understand how they can navigate and maneuver through the healthcare system whether it's musculoskeletal um, physiotherapy services, whether it's secondary care in a hospital, or whether it's just a bit of health advice and support. We've seen primary healthcare and digital healthcare grow to become our most frequently used benefit over the close to seven years that we've been offering it now. And it's been absolutely um, intrinsic to how we deliver. And we have a large number of partners we work with, with everything from GP to physiotherapy, to online mental health services, to um, self-management forms for different conditions, to remote um, dermoscopy of skin lesions. So why the platform? If you think about what we do in terms of supplying services to our members, we develop these services really to help them have better outcomes either because the service can engage them better or because the quality of the service that's given can give um, something substantially different to what people have had before. A big part of really having that platform in place, being able to integrate the different experiences too, to get better outcomes. What do I mean by that? It's basically being able to share the information from all the different experiences that you have, from all the different information we have, to give the most personalized, the best, the most effective, the most helpful uh, guidance, recommendations, support to members, but it's also making sure that customers have a great experience. We know that healthcare can typically be you know, 10, 20 years behind some retail uh, services in terms of experience, and we're keen to help really bring that up to speed and make people have a great interaction going forward. What the platform approach has done for us at Vitality, um, it has allowed us to provide online claims and straight through experiences for everyone for members. So a large proportion of our members can go through and have their inter entire healthcare interactions go through without interacting with any humans. It's allowed us to give the best possible support to members. We recently launched um, our latest iteration of the Vitality program. And a big part of that is collecting all the information we have to give the next best possible recommendation for people to improve their health. It also allows for a better interplay of services differently too particularly if you're not just connecting with the customer, but also with the healthcare providers to give the best outcomes. So the platform area is an area that's going to continue to be more important to us. In terms of what we recommend to earlier stage companies who want to interact with us, there are really three things that I say that are so, so important to think of. The first one is being absolutely crystal clear in your vision for how this is going to help customers. And that is really, really important for us to think how this is going to flow through to the customers from a delivery perspective, and also how they're going to use it. The second one is think about the quickest path to delivery to. Um, typically any health service, any payer, any um, whether private or public are going to have lots of different projects on the go at one point. So thinking actually about the way in which you can um, develop your service that you can integrate, that you can proceed through all of the um, bureaucratic steps that need to happen to work with a large organization is critical. I think finally, it's thinking about differentiation too. I think the inflow of capital to digital health over the past decade and longer has been absolutely marvelous. And us as payers and customers have more options than they've ever had before. It also makes for a crowded environment in some areas too. So being able to understand how an offering is different to other options out there is absolutely key. 
and will really help us understand the value of an individual organization solution. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ali. We'll, we'll, we'll get back uh, to you uh, shortly. Um, Unity, I mean, uh, Startup Health is uh, since uh, many years uh, uh, an amazing, um, I would say, observatory, you know, an amazing platform uh, in its own right for startups to really uh, thrive in so many different ways. Uh, and I've been, you know, multiple times, uh, uh, you know, there with you in, you know, multiple, uh, you know, situations, the festival. Uh, and this is a, a proof of that. That's a picture of, you know, uh, Unity and me uh, in their New York uh, uh, office. And Unity contributed to the chapter about open innovation and partnerships. Uh, and you understand already the first, uh, uh, I would say, dots connecting with uh, with Wally, what Ali just said. So Unity, w w I would like uh, uh, for you to give a, a little bit of a, an update about uh, startup health in general. And then uh, in continuing with what we said with Ali, you know, we see, uh, we have been seeing uh, an, an explosion of, of, of startups in, in the space. Uh, so what I would like to ask you is uh, how do you see exactly what he said, you know, how to cope with this uh, uh, ample choice of alternatives that we are starting to have, um, which is great in, in, in its own way, but of course poses also certain challenges. I'm thinking to the entrepreneurs as an example. And uh, linked with this, to begin with, areas that you feel are, relatively speaking, still to be either explored or probably still, you know, have uh, big uh, areas of, of improvement, given you have a, such a wide and high quality <clears throat> perspective, you know, on the, on, the, on the ecosystem. Well, thank you, Roberto. Um, it's great to be here. And, and um, I was reflecting back on when you started the book and how much has changed um, even since then. Um, you know, we started Startup Health in 2011 um, to really start a, a mission to transform the, the world of health, global health, um, and, and set out on a journey to achieve health moonshots. We've we focused on 12 global health moonshots that can impact a billion people. So I bring that up because... Um, I wanted to just kind of put things in context from where things were a decade ago to where they are now. Um, we now have the world's largest digital health portfolio, 400 companies from 26 countries. Um, at, you know, 10 years ago, there was about $2 billion a year globally going into investment into health innovation. Um, as of Q3, we've tracked over $30 billion of capital flowing into over a thousand companies just this year. Um, we expect that to be over $40 billion by the end of the year. Um, our portfolio went from an enterprise value pre-COVID of under $3 billion to more than $25 billion in the past two years. So I, I bring that up because um, what we've seen in the past 24 months in the post-COVID world is exponential demand um, for innovation around health, um, the pace of user adoption uh, transform. So there, the customers have shown up and the users, whether those are clinicians or patients or uh, people working throughout the system are all leveraging different aspects of, of health innovation. Uh, the regulatory environment has transformed uh, in the US, but also around the world. Um, we're really seeing a global transformation, but still at its earliest phases. Um, as, as we think about platforms, I think we're in the midst of what I would call the, a great platform race. Um, it's not clear who the few platform leaders will be of the future. You see um, the Lavangos and Teladocs merging uh, over the past two years. You see companies like Amwell, which is in our portfolio now, acquiring um, startup health company Conversa um, and, and really building out a, a platform approach. 
Um, you see the tech companies and the retail companies um, all create their own versions of, of different platforms, as well as the payers. Um, so it's just really, really an exciting moment. I, I do think it's a unique moment because for so many years, there was extraordinary innovation happening, but there wasn't necessarily a market. There weren't people using the technologies and innovation. It wasn't being integrated into the system. And certainly the customers had not shown up. That has changed um, in, in the post-COVID world. So we're entering a new inning, uh, a new kind of phase, I think, of opportunity. Um, we're starting to see some really, really exciting trends uh, around the world, um, opportunities where I would highly recommend more investment go. Um, for example, we're seeing the convergence between virtual care models and real world care delivery. Um, you're starting to see uh, even the virtual care platforms start to integrate with real world in real life care delivery. And I would expect um, to see much more of that type of integration. Um, we're, we're seeing much more of a full stack uh, approach to delivering care. Um, companies like in, in our portfolio, Devoted Health, uh, which just raised a $1.2 billion round um, a few months ago, um, are really developing a full stack from being what they, they're called a pay vider. So they're providing care. They're also the payer. And if you really dig under the hood, they're delivering every aspect of, of care uh, through, throughout the process and really integrating extraordinary amounts of technology and data into their, into their workflow, building from the bottom up. So it's, it's just really an exciting moment. Um, I would be looking uh, over the, the immediate future as well as long term to the global opportunity. Um, it, it is just really extraordinary to see the innovation happening in places like Colombia, Brazil, uh, throughout South America, um, throughout Europe, um, throughout North Africa and the MENA region, um, throughout um, Southeast Asia, throughout Asia in general. Um, really, you could go all over the globe and point to opportunities for great entrepreneurs new ecosystems that are emerging, investment opportunities, and moments of, of transformation. Um, I would say the big question marks I have still, who are the leaders of the future? Um, will they be traditional healthcare players? Will they be um, technology or retail players? Will it be new emerging players like a devoted health um, or City Block, or or Teladoc and Livongo, Amwell. Um, it's or will each region have its own? Um, I think these are the big questions, but these are also the big opportunities, and and what really makes us excited um, because there's so much opportunity still for entrepreneurs and innovators, opportunities for investors and opportunities for legacy leaders in the market to collaborate and start to work with these uh, innovators in a way that can transform their own businesses. Yeah, no, <clears throat> couldn't, couldn't, couldn't agree more. And we touched a lot of uh, uh, interesting topics. We, we already are 20 minutes into our 30 minutes of time that we have, but that's the nature of it and I love it. Um, so, I think clearly, I mean, COVID guys has been, uh, a, 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 of course, you know, a, a serious issue for uh, many, many, many people, uh, but it's been also a catalyzer for innovation as all crisis, right? Uh, we know crisis comes from uh, ancient Greek and means change. Uh, and in any crisis, there is a change opportunity. Uh, and the change opportunity that comes with COVID is it's, it's for actually many sectors, to scale up digital um, uh, efforts, uh, generally speaking, uh, but also uh, the, uh, 
it's specifically to the healthcare uh, uh, field uh, and you know what we deal with. I think has been, and I said this multiple times. Think about tele telemedicine. You know, to make a, uh, uh, to make a concrete example, uh, telemedicine uh, is something that uh, literally, and I put this in the book, was conceived in 1967. Uh, uh, that is the time of the first documented, you know, uh, 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 connection that happened uh, from a from a telehealth perspective, <clears throat> and uh, essentially. Uh, uh, we did very little with it, despite few examples. I'm talking on a on a on a on a on a global scale, uh, until the the lack of physical access that we experienced during COVID created a gigantic proof of concept for both patients and physicians to really embrace telehealth, and that unlocked even policymakers had to ramp up uh, uh, the speed and kind of norm or regulate, you know, something that before was uncertain and therefore. Uh, very difficult to 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 scale. Um, so, and that we have seen in many multiple other areas. So I totally agree with you that uh, now we transition to a new phase. I like to say this is the beginning of a phase two. The phase one was, and for some of us, we also were there in the phase zero. You know, is this a thing, right? Uh, I'm talking before 2011. Then probably in the last years, uh, people understood that this was a thing. But uh, is is this a just a, a technology? Is this just you know a, a an investment opportunity? And we knew, and now I think many people more would agree that this is transformational for uh, the way we define health. Uh, and if that is true, that is key to the society also. I think had we had the much more personal health records, much more telehealth services, much more sensors connected uh, to passively monitor certain health conditions, the management of the pandemic would have been a lot better by definition, right? Uh, uh, because we had the certain tools that now we have, thanks to the reaction of the innovation ecosystem, uh, already in place, and surely we will have a for 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 the future. So, if this is all true, and we agree this is the beginning of phase two, which is to say, moving from pilots to scale. You know how to really integrate this into the healthcare systems, how to grant access to so many people. Uh, there are many questions still to be answered. Like as you said, Unity, uh, who would be the dominant players? from which angle they will come from, um, how we will make sure that uh, there will be the right access to these uh, solutions, because that requires a certain legislation in place in, in countries where universal health is present, uh, like, you know, certain parts of Europe, uh, requires, you know, a number of also process innovation, I would say. I would also add the needs, uh, uh, that these needs uh, also have literacy, you know? Doctors should be potentially brought up to speed about, about digital health. So I'm going to ask you now a few super, super quick questions. And, and so we have these five minutes. So uh, Ali, I mean, I, I believe you would agree as a doctor, as a medical doctor, that, you know, education and training will be important. Um, uh, in a, like in a minute, where would you see this coming from? Uh, is this a, a, a job the startups have to do? Is this someone else's job? Is your job maybe? So... What, what do you think about that? So I am really enthused by the amount of startups that come that are founded and run by health professionals. But I think the accountability for really education about how you can really optimize outcomes and integrate digital health, it's a collective accountability. Um, the health systems have to have that, the payers have to have that, the regulators have to have it, the clinicians have to have it too. And actually I think there needs to be a lot more um, discussion about how to embed innovation what we tend to see in lots of different health organizations is that there are always lots of fantastic sparks of innovation, but having that spark turn into a fire raging across all of the health systems to really expand and diffuse is an area that needs a, um, a composite approach from everyone, not just any individual. And everyone has an accountability to help find solutions and better outcomes for patients. Great. 
Unity, let me, uh, and besides, you know, if any comment on this, uh, the, the question that I, uh, uh, and if you want to chime in on this, please, and then I have yeah, a question. Gonna, you know, picking up on, on sure. what Ali said, um, I, I, and something you said earlier, you know, the re telehealth's been around for decades, as you mentioned. Um, the real innovation going on today is around other types of innovation, uh, business model innovation, design innovation, figuring out how to properly embed into workflows, what I would call invisible innovation, so that the, the, um, the, the convergence of technologies are not like, oh, there's some separate appendage here that's called technology or innovation. Mm -hmm. It's actually just designed into whatever it is we're doing. So I think the, the real opportunity uh, is for us to think more exponentially um, you know, there's over 5 billion people in the world that are completely outside of the system. Um, there are, you know, of the two and a half billion that have care, it's not very good. Um, so I, I think we're being in a phase two or phase three or whatever we want to call it. The real opportunity is to leap forward, to truly push the boundaries of opportunity and, and shoot for the moon, uh, so to speak, and, and really surpass where, where we are. Um, I, I think it goes way beyond um, doctors because many countries don't even have enough doctors. Um, we, we need to really leap um, forward in, in radical ways and think about global health in, in a more transformative way. I think that's the real opportunity. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that's great and very, very agreeable. I still remember, and it's available on, on multiple platforms, our discussion about the moonshot thinking that I thought was, you know, uh, one of the la last time we did that in video uh, in, in your festival in, uh, around the JP Morgan that must have been probably two years ago. I mean, sure, surely probably the last edition before before the COVID. And, and, and by the way, we're having our next festival March 6th through the 9th in Miami Beach. Uh, we would like to invite everyone there. Uh, so save the date. Okay. I was about to ask you, what about the next festival? So you you beat me on time. Uh, and... Uh, so no, that that's great, and it will be probably warmer than San Francisco in January. <laughs> it's Although, spring break, it's spring break. Come on, it's, it's spring break, absolutely. So that will be that will be the next uh, for that. Uh, and we we have just like one minute left, and I had that question for you, Unity. When you mentioned the, about the different players, uh, uh, I. You know, you didn't mention or probably, you know, was part of the tech category, but specifically the usual suspects, you know, the Apples, the, the, the Amazons, you know, what, what I mean, realistically, uh, we all know they have health plans, but, you know, I mean, they're aiming to enter but and or entering or have entered. But what what's realistically your 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 take on that? Will they be like uh, huge digital players what, what's, what's your take on that i don't know yes, a... it, they already are i mean everyone's wearing a, not everyone but all the people wearing an apple watch or it's a healthcare device um you know look what uh amazon is doing in terms of pharmacy and drug delivery um how microsoft is integrating in with their ai plays um they are all embedded in uh, deeply and going much bigger in the future in the healthcare. If you're a trillion dollar company and need to be a two or three trillion dollar company, healthcare is going to be a big part of that growth market for you. So we, we, you know, we can be sure that it will be, you know, substantial part of the equation uh, moving forward. Yeah. My big question is, are the legacy healthcare companies acquiring digital innovation or are digital innovation companies going to acquire legacy healthcare companies? I have a suspect that they might be <laughs> much more on the latter. I've seen the first startup that uh, has acquired some molecules. So he's doing uh, integrated DTX, digital therapeutics, not from the, you know, digital side, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and being, you know, like leveraged in a, in a, in a, in a chemical pharmaceutical setting but the other way around. So these guys going out and, and scout for molecules 
to embed under, so to speak, you know, the, 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 the app. And of course, we know a few other companies have done uh, from the digital side towards the brick and mortar, you know, kind of uh, journey already. It's, it's a beginning, but I think we would see more and more of that. My, you know, and, and maybe Ali, real quickly, uh, you'll chime in on this. I think the problem we need to solve is so big and so important that my feeling is starting to be that there's literally space for everyone and there's probably not even enough because there hasn't been a challenge in humanity so big as fixing, you know, the, the, the broken, to be honest, you know, on a global scale healthcare system. So, uh, Ali, what's your, what's, what's your take on that re, re, real quick? Um, I think there are lots of examples of great healthcare being delivered um, globally without digital, but the potential for digital to transform things is so, so big in terms of the quality, in terms of the experience people have, and in terms of the overall cost too. When we think about each of these things from a quality perspective, even something as simple as medication errors, where there are you know hundreds of thousands or millions that happen kind of on a regular basis in health systems across the world, technology can absolutely transform that. If you think about quality too, the just simple ability of analytics to help benchmark or the value in giving people self-management tools to really take control of their healthcare with coaching as needed, those things are huge. And in terms of experience, we talked already about the challenges that exist out there. Digital can just bring everything together in one place and make the information asymmetry that people see in healthcare completely level to really help people have information they need to help them understand how to navigate through the system and how to move forward as well. So I think there is a really, really bright future to deal with all of the challenges facing healthcare and digital is, um, it, I don't think it's part of the solution. I think it's the majority of the solution. Great. Uh, guys, let, uh, let answer with just a number and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Question is, in how many years, 5, 10, 15, 20, things will be substantially different, globally speaking, that we will look behind it and would say, you know, how were we doing before, like in banking or or other industries, like 5, 10, 15, 20, who goes first? So I, I think we'll make 100 years of progress in the next decade. Okay. So then in 10 years, healthcare will be completely different. Completely different, exponential. A lot of the hard work has been done over the past 25, 30 years and we'll see the innovation accelerate in the form of actual outcomes over the next decade that will be very impactful on people's health and well-being. <clears throat> Ali, 5, 10, 15, 20. I was going to go with seven. The reason I'm slightly more bullish than Unity is when I look at the big pressures impacting healthcare, um, workforce ones, economic ones, and the speed at which they're increasing on a global scale, I think those will be huge catalysts for things to get faster and faster over coming years. Fantastic. Guys, I, 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 I'll share uh, my experience with this. Everything I said over the past year has happened a bit faster than what I said. That's why I'm now crowdsourcing a new prophecies about the time that this will be completely different. And then we'll see where these end up, you know, with. Yeah. And, and, and again, <clears throat> I, you know, for all the innovators and entrepreneurs out there, it's a big world and so much of it uh, needs uh, your insight, innovation, passion, dedication. Um, let's think about this globally because it really is a global opportunity. Yeah, and a, and a, and a huge global challenge. Guys, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Uh, spread, you know, uh, all around this, this, you know, our, our, our collective, I would say, digital health or passion for digital health, which at the end of the day is a passion, I believe, for changing things for the better now that we have all the tools mm -hmm. and, and a path ahead that, that probably would really make this possible. So, again, thank you so much for joining me. And thank you, everyone, for listening on the various platforms and we'll see uh, most of you hopefully next Friday. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. And everyone go buy the book. <laughs> Thank you, Unity. Yeah. Thank you, Ali. Bye, guys. Have a great Bye. weekend.